going on, people? Happy, happy hustle day. All right. This is something that I always said I was going to do. I'm just starting stuff much, much earlier than I did in the past. And this is the format. This is going to be kind of wild. It's kind of different. I'm going to share some stuff with you that's uh, definitely over the top. And it is uh, my personal hustler formula, which was something that happened over many, many years. So let's pull that out. So once again, if you've got any questions, anything pops in your head, just go ahead and answer the question. And after I get through the presentation, I will answer it. And uh, you know, this can be open floor because I've noticed that that happens quite a bit. And also, this isn't going to be that long because it's not that complex. It's a little dastardly, but it's not that complex. So with that, we'll get it started. Now, if you don't know anything about me, I love Asian philosophy. And that's a big, big part of this. This was when I was living in the boarding house, 1998. And I was, it was a, it was a hot day. I was in there sketching. And I doodled a lot, quite a bit. And I just wrote Scheme Incorporated. And I was like, ah. And this was actually about two weeks before I got laid off. And I wrote it down and I sketched out some stuff. I didn't know that seed was planted because I had originally come up with some very unethical plans. I had sketched out some stuff, which was pretty much uh, white collar crime. That's essentially what it was because that's where I was. I was pretty desperate, didn't have a car, hated the job that I was working and I kept going back and forth, back and forth. It's like, am I going to do it? Am I not going to do it? Am I going to do it? It was the internal struggle that went on. So I just started working more and more to keep my mind off of it. Because once you open up that door, bad things can happen. So two weeks go by. I'm laid off. I go back to my room. I sit there and I pull out my doodles and I see Scheme Incorporated and I know that I can do something illegal and have two to ten thousand dollars within a matter of hours. And I did something that kind of shocked me because I was desperate. I was extremely, extremely desperate. I ripped up Scheme Incorporated and I found one sheet and I wrote no go. That was a term in the military. It's just like, you didn't pass. I was like, no, I'm not going to do this. And I was like, I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to do it legally. And it was a, such a struggle. I just got laid off for the third time in 18 months. I had this thing I could do, but I couldn't do it. And that's when I learned that that was the first hustle. I had to hustle myself out of doing something that could jeopardize my freedom. That's how, that's how dark it was. I mean, it was really, really some dark days. So I sat down and I went through going back to college. And then in the meantime, I started creating. Now, I did do some stuff unethical, but it wasn't like illegal, going to put you in jail, you know, unethical. So I created six resumes for six jobs that I wanted on Monster.com. And I got one. And what I learned from that period of time, and that was that was the first part of the hustler mindset that you must make your days count because it was laid off. I had marginal unemployment that was going to kick in, but I was already struggling and I already had like part of another job. So with the, it, it was just dark, but I made every day count. I wrote a resume, put it up on monster, saw there was issues, rewrote it. I made every day count from the minute that I got laid off. I did some things that I never did before. And I realized that time is a non-renewable resource. Yes, you'll get another Tuesday next week. You sure will, but it will not be Tuesday, January the 14th, 2014. It will not. This day, once it's gone, it's gone. And when you're young, you don't really see this, but... You start to get a feeling where these days count and they mean something. And you have to make the most of them. So for a two week period, two week period, it took a full six weeks to reach, you know, from 
getting contacted, creating the fake Indian accent to getting the job. But I did in six weeks with the bulk of the work, 80% of the work done in two that I couldn't do in almost three years because I was focused. I wasn't wasting time. And that was the day. It was really the last time I was poor. I've never, ever felt poor. There was times when I was going through the process. I didn't have what I needed, but I never, ever felt poor again after that. So you got to understand, you got to get in your head. You have to have some kind of urgency clock that time is very, very important. Very important. Now, this is some other stuff. I have fucked up massively in life. Was married, got divorced, all kinds of crazy stuff. If you're going through a horrible divorce, then, you know, I will not bore you with the details. But it literally costed me my job, my life, my car, and my home. I often wonder why I didn't crack up. But this is what I did after the first year was the the roughest. I was a messed up puppy. I started writing love poetry and it wasn't it was to kind of keep some perspective on what will happen in the future, because I know people that went through one bad divorce and they never opened up to another person ever again in life ever. And I didn't want to be that person. So by year two, still living in the boarding house, you know, after being homeless, I kind of got comfortable with meeting someone because the thing is you When I tell you about fucking up and I tell you about making mistakes and people laughing at you and it stings greatly when you're going through it. It is horrible when you're going through it. But I can tell you one day you'll heal. One day you'll smile. One day the sun will shine and the scars will not hurt as much. It will happen when you are going through it. Nobody can tell you that you don't want to hear that shit because the pain is right there in the center of your mind and it's taking over everything. It's just no. And this is kind of one of the tenets of the Declaration of G that I would rather fuck up than have regrets for not going forward. And I do that a lot. I fuck up quite a bit. It's actually a running joke in the family. My mother, she's like, what have you done now? And it's become a fun process because I call it putting Humpty Dumpty back together again. I have my own emotional salvage kit that when I do something, and I really haven't done anything crazy in years, so I haven't had to really pull it out. But there were days that I had to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And what that is, is internal self-management. You you have to manage your sadness. You have to manage your happiness because I was really alone. Even though I was in the boarding house full of people, dysfunctional people, alcoholic people, crackheads, druggies, all kinds of people. They're full of people. I didn't want to associate with them because I was definitely afraid of becoming just like them. Because the environment was, that was the environment and it can just suck you in. So I would stay in my room and write and, you know, doodle and paint and I really wouldn't mess with those people. But. Don't be afraid to fuck up. That's what I'm telling you. That is part of the hustler formula. Because once you realize that time is super important, you want to fuck up frequently. Because the thing is, if you haven't listened to The Ninth Law, it talks about that. Say, you know, it took me a year to write my first book. It still would have been fucked up because I didn't know what I was doing. It still would have been fucked up. So instead of me fucking up in 90 days, I would have fucked up in 365 days. And that process would have been extended and protracted. If you have a business idea, if you want to do eBay, just take a week and load it up. Learn as much as you can. Make mistakes because you're going to learn so fast compared to methodically. Because there's a guy on YouTube. It's called Jason Fried. He owns 31 Signals. And they talk about they're coming. They don't plan. They just like, okay, we have an idea. And they work on it because they know that whatever ideal, whatever software they make, there will be revisions. I don't care how perfectly they plan it. There will always be contingencies you just can't count for that they will make them change course. 
So don't be afraid of fucking up. I mean, seriously. This is um, probably the big one. We are just in love with people with innate talent. They make us feel so good. We want to be like them because it seems so effortless. It's just like, oh, God, you know, the way that Michael Jordan just took off at the free throw line and did the dunk. And it was just, ah, oh, it was godlike. And don't be seduced by that shit. Drive is more important than talent. There is a big, big issue with people feeling like I don't have enough talent. I just told you I wrote a book. And I didn't know what I was doing. And I sold that sucker and I made money. I didn't have the talent when I wrote it that I have now, you know, five years later. It was a process. A burning desire to be better than you were can move mountains. If you have that desire, you were willing to never say no. I put the guy over here doing this overhead press. For those of you who don't know, that's 315 pounds on that bar. The bar is 45 pounds. Each plate is 45. Actually, it's more than 315. Those clips on the end, those are about... F no, those might be 10 pounders. Either they're 5 or 10 pounds. So that's like 325, and he's going to push that over his head. I'm telling you about that because, for those of you who don't know, I turned 47 last year. And starting April of last year, I got on a serious weightlifting program. At the age of 47, I am stronger than I've ever been in my life. It was the burning desire to get stronger. People in my gym were looking at me crazy. When I would walk in the gym and put three plates on, that's what I warm up with with the squat. I warm up with 315. I warm up with what he has. They were like, what? And then it's 405. And then it's 500. And they're like, what the hell? It was information. Guess where I learned this stuff from? YouTube. I found some people. They don't have a lot of views, but the guys know what they're talking about. And I listened to their videos. I studied them. I wrote notes. I created my own program. And my back, my core, the things that count are stronger than they've ever been in my life. So what I'm telling you is if you get started late, it doesn't matter. If you have to drive, if you take the information it is more important than talent. I never thought of myself as genetically gifted in terms of weightlifting, but it appears that I am. I didn't. I would never have known that if I hadn't embarked on this impossible equation. People tried to talk to me. You don't need to lift heavy. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do this. No, no, no. Go do cardio. I can tell you after a day of writing, doing videos, my mind is mush. I get on the treadmill. It helps out a little bit. I go to the gym and I move some heavy iron. I feel completely and utterly relaxed. My digestion is better. So understand, drive is more important than all that other stuff that people are telling you about. It's like, well, you know, you have to have the connections. You have to be a part of the built. No, no, no. Time. Not being afraid to fuck up and an unquenchable drive to move forward can take you places that some of the most talented people in the world will never, ever visit. This is this is similar to drive, but it's totally different. Drive is that thing that makes me get up in the morning at 4.30 without an alarm clock. Forward motion is when you fuck up, you don't stop. This is the thing that happens. People make a mistake. They get scared, and then what they want to do is consolidate the losses. They want to stop moving because if they keep moving, they're going to feel that they may fuck up again. And... You start to protect your tender parts. You, you protect the underbelly. And you kind of, you stop moving. You don't move as fast. Stillness is deaf. Stillness is deaf. When I started my YouTube channel, and, you know, if you're a Facebook friend or, or you know, or you actually saw it in Hustle You, I received so many people giving me, it's like, don't do as many videos. They're too long. You cuss too much. I kept going forward. I kept going forward. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to do it. Because the thing I learned when you were going with forward motion is you learn that some things aren't for everybody. Your forward motion may take you to a crowd that's small. 
but passionate. Your forward motion may take you to an arena of people. It really depends on what you're doing, what your message is, and how bad you want it. Because I say hustle is an accent verb because when you say hustle, you almost have to say like hustle. You have to give it some energy and enthusiasm because it's a different kind of thing when your hustle is married and deeply devoted to forward action. It's like, okay, we messed up. We made a mistake. This didn't work out, but we're still going to keep going. Some people call that, uh, I grew up in Alabama, they call it a one-track mind. It has gotten me much farther than my intellect. Some of the things that have been really successful, they weren't brilliant. It's just I kept at it until it, I, it, I figured it out. Some stuff was elegantly simple, but... This may seem crazy, but running fast on the wrong track is better than not moving at all. And people are like, that's wasted energy, that's wasted time, and they're wrong. This is what happens when you run on the wrong track. You take off, and you're running, and you're burning sweat, you're burning calories. You find out about you. See, there's an exploration. Even though the track is wrong, even though that endeavor is going to crash and burn, you're going to develop you. When I was a kid, there was the saying, always do your best. I didn't figure it out until I was much older. Because the thing is, even if it doesn't turn out the way you want it to, by doing your best, you develop a habit of performing at a higher level. And each time that you make it better, your level of performance gets better and better. And it's not some leaps and bounds type situation. It is more of a steady progression. And I want you to visualize in your mind. 19 whatever year you were born and I want you to visualize yourself as a baby and I want you to go in the mirror and look at yourself now through steady consistent progress forward motion you went from a six seven eight whatever you weighed as a baby to what you are today as an adult it was a long period of sustained growth forward motion and that's the thing that kind of messes people up because we live in a very microwave, very, let's have it now, let's really, sometimes it takes a while for you to figure your your thing out or figure out how you can move and how what you should do. And the fastest way to do this is to start doing stuff and failing. The more you fail, the smarter you will be. Another part of the hustler formula is to learn how to smile when disappointment knocks. It helps tremendously. During the storage auction business time frame, I had a lot of stuff that happened on a personal level. The business was good. You know, there was a few business things that happened, but they weren't really as uh, stinging, debilitating as personal stuff. I mean, I will give you something that happened that ended up being one of the best things that ever happened to me. I was madly, madly in love with Dana. We lived together. I made a fatal error. I moved out of my house and rented it to somebody and moved into hers. She had a son. A big 21-year-old hunking son of lazy, pot-smoking nothingness. I would come home and the house would smell of weed within a week. Of arriving in Atlanta, he found the weed man, but he couldn't find a job. She tried to get him to come to work with me, and I was like, oh, hell no. So, we know blood is thicker than water. So, one day, she goes out of town, and she doesn't come back. Then when she comes back, she comes back with her family. And everyone's just kind of looking at me strange. I didn't know that we had broken up, but everyone else did. So, when we finally had the conversation... I had to pack my car, pack my stuff, and I actually went to a hotel. I was actually in that hotel for two weeks until I got uh, suitable accommodations. I was in my room pissed because I loved the girl. You know, just because things go bad doesn't mean that, you know, you stop loving somebody. And I was in that room because I was cheap. I was in a cheap hotel because, you know, hotels are not cheap. So I was in this little ratty-ass hotel because I didn't want to spend any more money. And... I learned to watch comedy videos. 
If you're going through a moment where you're kind of depressed, go to Comedy Central, some comedy station. Uh, you can get it on Pandora and listen to it all day. I don't care how bad it is. One of those comedians is going to say some shit that's going to have your sides hurting. And I started laughing and I started laughing and I started laughing. And I'm like cracking up in this hotel room. And there was a knock on the door. And it's this dude. And I'm like, what do you want? And he's like, what are you listening to? And I showed him and everything. He started laughing and everything. And he was a salesperson. And he ended up going to the warehouse and buying $10,000 worth of stuff for his company. He never would have known about me if I wasn't laughing. So that was like a crazy story. But it happened because when you are using the hustler formula, one of the biggest components to dealing with failure undesired outcomes is emotional management. I've learned how to make myself happy when shit's going crazy. It's not enough to be sane and in control because that's stressful. That's stressful. But happiness, smiling, laughing, cracking up reduces stress like you wouldn't believe. So the next time you're going through some stuff or you're hustling and things are getting tight, stuff's getting kind of crazy. Comedy Central and let it go all day long. Some of the stuff will offend you. Some of it will drive you crazy. But there will be some people. Because that's how I discovered Bill Burr. Who cracks me up. His stuff. I've heard it a million times. But it still cr cracks me up. Like when he talks about taking the girlfriend. And mushing her head in the pumpkin. And just, just when she thinks she's going to die. And that little final twitch. He lets her go. The shit's crazy. And it helps you manage you. Because see the thing is. You can't really stop some of the things that are going to happen in your life. As you become really good with your hustle, you'll control 70, 80% of your life, maybe even 90% on a really good day. And that's that 10% that's just going to happen. And the only control you have is how you deal with it. And the reason that you have to learn how to smile with disappointment is when you become depressed, when you get knocked off your game, you, you power down. You totally power down. So you essentially are going to the gunfight with a pipe cleaner. And that's what happened. Anyone that's been depressed or had a lot of emotional stuff going on, you know how much energy it takes from you. So as soon as you feel that dark cloud coming, get yourself some Comedy Central. Go out with some friends because that's a very important thing about managing you. Because when you are able to laugh, when disappointment is, it goes away much quicker. Now, this is some stuff I've never talked about. Maybe on YouTube in the video. I am a deep, deep devotee to Asian philosophy. I read this book of Asian philosophy. I can't even remember the guy. It was an old book. You know, no fancy book cover, just a brown cover. And there were some very salient things in there for me. And I read it when I was 11, and I'm really glad. The big thing is, what you don't have, you can get and you can earn. We live in a culture that thinks certain things are entitled. Uh, you know, say someone's a family member and you get money. There's an expectation that you need to share because y'all family. Whether the person is really nice to you or not, there's that expression. You know, we are blood. We are family. You got that lottery? Man, I need my house paid off. Uh, yeah, uh, man, Melinda, my other baby mama, she want a Lex. And, um, yeah, uh, that other chick that just got pregnant, she wants a house in the Hamptons because, you know, I was telling them, like, you know, you're my brother. I mean, I haven't seen you in six years, but when I heard that you got that lottery, I knew my life was going to be good. <laughs> People do that. People do that. So you, you have to really kind of get away with that because my family, we've been through a lot and they finally respect the person that I am. But with the Asian philosophy, I learned many things. Many, many things. These things that you don't have, you can get. You can earn. You can study. Whereas with uh, typical American culture, is about expectations, uh, social position, certain expectations, like the whole thing with the elderly. 
you know, if you're born in the South, it's like if someone's old, you respect them, even if they're cussing you out. It's like, well, yeah, Mr. Gilmore cussed me out. But, you know, since he's an old man, I'm going to respect him. I don't have that filter. And it's kind of shocked a few old people. I operate on this principle. You respect me. I respect you. That goes from the little six-year-old kid to the 80-year-old person. Now, fortunately, most elderly people are naturally respectful. Because they grew up in that era. But there's a few jackrabbits that want to talk smackety smack to you. Then don't want you to say nothing to them because you're not being respectful. That's some bullshit to me. But once again, I'm a different dude. Just a different dude. But the Asian philosophy freed me from a lot of those social constraints. Because when you're operating your life in a manner that's consistent with principles that you came up that are good for you, you will find that they will conflict with a lot of social norms. And then at that point, you have to be really, really strong in you. Another thing that I do, and I've talked about it, but not to a great degree, is I meditate, transcendental meditation. That is something else. I was dating this chick in the boarding house, and she's like, let's go to the meditation center. And I was like, I don't want to go. And she's like, there's food. Okay, because I was hungry. I didn't have any money for food. They were serving food. I had a bus pass, so we went, and the food was off the chain. And actually, uh, they had us meditate before we ate. And it was very, very cool. Now, the first time I meditated, I passed out. I mean, they said I was snoring because it just removes all the stress. And like I said, if you're a Christian or Jew, you can still meditate, and it will not interfere with your religious beliefs meditation is a tool and this is something else i got from once again from asian philosophy because i look at the world and i look at history a little differently than other people there are people who are wedded to their tribe regardless of the things that their tribe does make sense or not like gypsies people born into the gypsy tribe well we're going to rob and loot and we're going to move around and around they don't have to they choose to do that because they feel that they must due to tribal code When you release yourself from that, the world becomes bigger. More opportunities come your way. So definitely, um, you know, Sun Tzu, Art of War, some other things. It is just a different vibe and it worked very well for me. Now, here's the hustler formula broken down. Work in truth. Learn how to deal with the world the way it is. Like with my writing groups. I peeped out. Five years ago, that if you write a book in a welly, well populated genre, it's gonna do better than a book that's well written, well edited. Took ten this dude in one of my group, it took him ten years to write his book, and he's pissed off that no one wants it. The book is probably a work of art, but it's a work of art that many people don't want to look at. Work hard, work long, and refuse to accept a wiki you. The weaker you is that little scared bitch that says, I don't want to list anymore. I want to go party. I deserve a vacation when I haven't worked in six months. That's the weaker you. Kick that bitch in the ass. Set your goals and make them process driven. Uh, I'll give you an example. When I write books, I break down word counts. And it's not sexy. People's like, oh, no, the muse. And the, no. Um, typically, this is my formula. If I'm going to write a 90,000 uh, word book, Because, you know, typically I may come up, the book may be done before I get to that word goal. I'm not going to just put words in there to fill a goal. But I know for me to write a book in a year that's 90,000 words, that's 250 words every day. So if I write a thousand words a day, that's actually four books in a year. That's four 90,000. Yeah, that's four 90,000 word books in a year. Because I broke down the process. I talked to a guy by the name of... uh, Dean Wesley Smith, uh, he's a writer. He wrote a lot of Starfish, Star Trek things. He has this wonderful blog, and he just broke down the process. And I was like, hey, 250 words a day. I can do that. I can actually do 1,000 words in an hour. So if I wrote an hour a day, Monday through Friday, I would get three books out a year if I sat there and kept that schedule. So whatever process that you need, like, say, take eBay. What is your process? You know, people talk about listing. Your real process is sourcing. Instead of like talking about listing. Okay. Once again, 
How much money do you want to make? Okay, I want to make two thousand. All right. How many items can you get that will and divide that by the two thousand? So you can get a hundred items, like twenty bucks a piece or something like that. I'm just throwing it out there. But essentially, do your income goal first, then find the products that will help you achieve that income, then create a listing process to help you list as many items you need. Because most people go find some stuff to sell, put it up on eBay, and kind of wonder why it doesn't sell. Or they listen to someone and they watch some on YouTube and they don't know that item no longer is hot. So make your goals and embed your goals with a process. There has to be a process. And then when you're working on the process, you're not like looking at the end of the goal like, that sure is far away. I'm tired already. No, you're deep in your process and things get done. When you work on the process, things get done. Like when I was working in the gym. The process was going to the gym three to four times a week and adding weight to the bar every day that I could. Then I had to backlog um, some of the stuff because it it just got to be untenable. Then I had to cycle. But for a good three months, I was adding weight every, 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 every workout. It was scary good. So that was the process, showing up and adding weight. The end goal was I got incredibly strong. But the process was showing up and adding a little bit of weight each workout, keeping a book, looking at what you did last time and trying to increase on this workout. Even if it's I even I have something that's called fractional weights. There's this they're like a quarter of a pound, a half of a pound, three fourths of a pound and a pound. That's what I was using because every, you know, it's consists once again, going back to moving forward. Adding those little weights is the reason I got strong because you may not be able to put five pounds on the bar. You may not even be able to put two, but you can do half an ounce. And then next time you can do uh, three fourths of an ounce. Then you you, you could do, I mean, three, you know, you can do half a pound. Take two of those. That's uh, that's a pound. You can move that and you just get stronger and stronger and stronger. And then you have periods where you'll just leap, which goes back to your process. Once you build your process, you're going to have periods where you're just going to like flow. You're just going to do way more than you normally do because you're going to become adroit at handling your process. You're going to get better and better and better, which is why you have to have goals and a process which give you the framework to work your hustle. And when you don't get what you want, keep wanting. Um, There were some goals I had at 11 that I did not accomplish until I was 40. Four decades. You know, many people become disenfranchised and it's like, that's too long. If you live long enough and you keep working, you'll get it. Just keep on. And it's, this is, this is, this is it. This is the hustler format. This is what I use to get the things that I want. It's not overly complex. Doesn't take hours and hours, but this is my hustle formula. It took me a little while to tweak it, but there it is. And booyah, I'm out of there. So with that, I am going to open up the floor to questions if there are any. If there are no questions, uh, I will shut it down and I will put this up in Hustler U tomorrow. So, hi right, Camila, how you doing? Just to let you know, making some changes. I'm going to start migrating everyone out of Hustler U into the online platform. It's going to take a little time. I've given myself until the 20th to get it done. At that point, you will get an email address, a password, and you know it's going to be totally different. The Hustle U Facebook group is going to grow tremendously, but I'm pulling all of the videos and stuff out of there. I'm going to make it free, but I'm pulling everything out and get everyone transitioned where you're getting your information and then the new folks can come in. And the reason I'm doing this is Hustler, the Hustler Mindset Project is about to get extremely expensive. Now, for you who are in, you're in. That's gonna, nothing's going to change. No price increase. Uh, there are some of you who have paid for the year. Uh, if you want to pay up for the year, that's cool, too. Just shoot me an email or you know, hit me up on Facebook, and I'll send you uh, the breakdown. But the next thing that we start tomorrow, which is uh, digital products, is going to be totally different than anything I've done. Because there are many of you who have hobbies. There's things you know about. That you can actually write an ebook or an audio book and make money. I mean, you know, it may be 30 bucks a month in the beginning. But see, this is the thing about the new disruptive economy. I was a lifelong reader and I used to be really, really hurt 
when they would tell me they were remanded books. And if you don't know what that is, books go to the bookstore. And if they don't sell within a certain time, they, they take them out and they destroy them. As a book lover, that was like, no, you're getting me. So with the new world, you let's say, let's just say you write a book on roses. You have a special way of grooming and pruning roses. And say that book doesn't take off to five or ten years from now. But then that book starts making you a thousand bucks a month. That happens frequently in literature. Um, the Walking Dead was actually a comic book series before it was uh, the show. So by creating content, putting stuff out there, you, you know, you may get picked up in the future. But for you to get picked up in the future, you have to make it. You 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 have to create stuff. So. Oh, oh, I, I forgot to click on the question. Hold on. Uh, this is not a question. I'm glad you were able to turn your situation around and go the right direction and make your own path. Thanks for teaching us and sharing your methods. Sure. Um, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Everyone has a price. I mean, I know what I will do. That was another reason that uh, after, um, you know, I was easily able to turn down the drug deal with dude. I'm pretty square when it comes to certain things. I talk a lot of shit, but there's... The illegal thing, that's just not my that's just not my deal. I will push the ethics of certain things like, you know, um, the ultimate garage sale selling stuff on the weekends. That was totally against code, totally against code enforcement. But to me, that was like I can live with that. You know, wasn't killing anybody and nothing really illegal was happening. It's just some statutes that I didn't agree with. So I said, fuck them. Uh, this is from Deb. After two years of being in depression, it was like starting over again. Actually, I feel that. One of the things I did was listen to you, so I started setting goals again. Thanks. Goals are huge. When you were going, like, you know, I'll talk about the ugly marriage to a degree because I got super depressed. And that's actually what started me to write. Uh, I had to go to therapy. Yep, I was therapized. I, I saw a counselor. I was a member of a group because when I said I was a messed up puppy, I was a messed up puppy. And... One lady was like, Patrick, you know, for those of you who know, my first name is Patrick, but I go with my middle name because it sounded so cool when I was in corporate America and they didn't know I was a Negro. And uh, she said, it's going to come out constructively or destructively. It's up to you. And I was like, huh. So I started writing all of that darkness in a journal. And I remember one night I wrote for like six hours. I wrote for six hours, all of the bad stuff, all of the unfairness, how my life was fucked up, who I, I mean, and this went on for about a good six months because I was writing in that journal every day. And the more that I wrote, the better I felt. It was just like each day, a little bit of the hurt, a little bit of the pain was leaving because I don't wish that on anybody. You know, that whole thing, like, just get a divorce. No, no, I don't wish, you know, if you can really work it out. And you'll hear that from people who went through a rough, they don't tell you, just get the hell on. No, like, if you can work it out. Because in a divorce, everyone gets hurt. The kids, husband, everyone gets, no one comes out of a divorce unscarred. No one. I don't care what anyone tells you, everyone gets hurt. So if that's something you can avoid, avoid that shit. And uh, there, there'll be more stuff like this. Like I said, now that I have my new, and this is called, um, dang, ScreenFlow. <laughs> this is way more reliable than uh, this little thing that was here with uh, GoToWebinar because that was really giving me the blues. So now that I'm more confident then because it processes much faster. But if there are no more questions, I'm going to shut this down because we'll be back tomorrow night with the first uh, how to create digital products webinar. And I'm just going to share all the stuff that I know about that because you can still do resale and you can still do this because I'm going to give you a process. Because the thing is, if you just do a little bit every day, the product will get done. Everyone's like, I want to do a weekend. I want to work for 90 hours straight. And just get it done so I can move to the next day. I've learned to enjoy the process of doing this. And it's just made the journey so much sweeter. Okay. Well, that looks like it's it. Um, some other stuff um, before I go. 
I'm going to redo the furniture webinar that go to uh, probably tomorrow or Thursday. I'm going to redo that and I'm just going to upload it in Hustle U. And because I'm going to do two loads since you know a lot of you in Hustle U and I haven't made the big transition because I'm still planning that. I'm going to load videos in two places because it's really easy for me once I open up the doors to everyone else for me to just get rid of those tabs. So you'll still be able to get your information. I'm trying to make it as uh, painless as possible if there's such a thing. All right. So I want to say thanks to everybody that came out. Uh, be sure to uh, be at the webinar because it's going to be some different kind of stuff. Totally different stuff. All right. So thanks for everybody that came out and uh, I will see you tomorrow night.